Okay, the final item of business uh, this evening is a member's business debate on motion 6215 in the name of Bill Kidd on Co-op, Sam H, Mind and Inspires Together's Through Tough Times report. The debate will be concluded without any questions being put. I would invite any members wishing to participate to press the request to speak buttons now or as soon as possible. And I call on Bill Kidd to open the debate for around about seven minutes, Mr Kidd. Thank you very much, President Officer, and thank you to all of my colleagues for joining me for this important debate on mental health, resilience and community. The idea for this debate was sparked by the Co-op Sam H Mind and Inspires joint report on mental health and community resilience during the pandemic, entitled Together Through Tough Times. This report was championed by Jude Deacon and Sarah Green from Sam H, who liaised with the Co-op and saw the idea for this report become a reality. The Together Through Tough Times report looked at two different social demographic groups situated across four areas in the UK. The first group surveyed was young people aged 16 to 24, and the second group was people who have recently been bereaved. Through the lens of analysis, the Together Through Tough Times researchers compared four areas in the UK, including Yoker, in my constituency. These four areas shared various social outcomes. They all had higher than expected well-being in their communities, despite high levels of deprivation. In these areas, people tend to face social difficulties, such as higher rates of poverty, crime and employment. We know from Sam H's work that there are strong links between poverty and depression. Yet, despite this, the four areas all experience strong community resilience and good mental well-being. The researchers sought to find out what were sh the shared characteristics of these areas, what made the people living in these areas, many of whom were facing significant pressures in life, continue to thrive. The answer was community and belonging. Whether it is a pandemic, bereavement, moving to a new town or city, or a breakdown in family relationships or friendships, we can all face times when our community and sense of belonging is taken away from us and our mental health suffers as a result. It is often in these moments that we need support the most. In these moments, so many have found crucial mental health support and community in Sam H. The universal need for community and belonging is why we are all here today debating the Together Through Tough Times report. Specifically, the report found that community hubs, a collaborative voluntary sector, options for informal and formal mental health support and belonging and identity are the building blocks of resilience. I think something that was clear to all MSPs throughout the pandemic was the vital role of community groups and charities in getting people through those incredibly isolating years. There are a few local community groups and organisations based in Annie's Land that I would also like to highlight. They have done fantastic work locally, especially during the pandemic. DRC Generations has notably supported families already connected with their organisation through extremely difficult circumstances. This included bereavement and the tragedy of suicide. They provided real community to affected families during the darkest of times. Men Matter Scotland is another local group doing incredible work. They support men who may have struggled with low mental health, depression and suicidal thoughts. Based in Annie's Land, they created a peer support network which does exactly what the Together Through Tough Times report talks about, providing formal support and creating space for long-lasting friendships to be forged. Sam H has published statistics on the rates of suicide in Scotland since the start of 2020. They found that men are three times more likely to commit suicide. This issue needs to be taken seriously. Peer support networks like Men Matter and also the Sam H Wellbeing programmes are vital. As the saying goes, a brother is born for a time of adversity and a friend loves at all times. Brotherhood is essential, especially in the face of these statistics. We cannot underestimate the power of friendship and having someone to talk to. There are, of course, so many local and national charities that do this fantastic work. Another charity that springs to mind is Safe Families. 
They bring support, hope and belonging to families facing acute difficulties. I am sure my colleagues across the Chamber will mention other examples of community action. The Together Through Tough Times report reinforces this, measure, this message of community increasing our resilience and capacity to weather periods of crisis and isolation. Community hubs create opportunity for intervention with people who could otherwise develop poor mental health. I was pleased to host Sam H's um, evening reception in the Scottish Parliament last night. In this, we heard some tremendous stories of people overcoming significant mental health challenges as a result of receiving Sam H's mental health support. This included Teresa, who had not felt able to leave her house for 30 years. When she started going to Sam H's wellbeing support cafe, she was welcomed by smiles, met genuine friends, and felt capable and able to keep coming back. She is taking strides in overcoming this issue and has seen her confidence increase and made many friends along the way. She is now inspiring so many others to reach out for support. Sam H's work and the work of local community organisations is transforming lives. What is so great about the Together Through Tough Times report is that the findings are being implemented. The co-op, with its members and customers, raised a sum of £8 million. This money is now going to Sam H, Mind and Inspire to implement targeted and effective mental health provisions. We all have mental health, and it is important to know how to look after ourselves and reach out for support when we need it. I would encourage all those who, uh, who are here and others listening to consider old friends you have not heard from in a while. Check in and see how they are doing, to be hospitable and invite people over, to be generous and help your friends or community in some way. Whether this is giving your time, gifts or simply a listening ear, it could be a small act of helping a friend, might be building furniture or helping with DIY around the house or with the garden. These may all sound like simple examples, but that is the beauty of it. Helping someone, even yourself, can be the simple step of picking up the phone or going along to that community event that you have heard about. We are designed for community and real friendships, where we help carry each other's burdens. No one is an exception to that, and no one should ever feel alone. Thank you very much, uh, Mr Kidd. We now move to the open debate. I call for Sue Webber to be followed by Stephanie Callaghan for around four minutes. Ms Webber. Thank you, Presiding Officer. And I want to genuinely thank Bill Kidd for bringing this debate to the Chamber today to celebrate the partnership between the Co-op, uh, Sam H Mind and Inspire. Thank you, Bill. In 2021, the Co-op and their charity partners published the Together Through Tough Times report, which identified the characteristics of resilient communities how this strengthens mental, mental health and how to promote and encourage community resilience. The co-op then went on to deliver an amazing fundraising effort for their charity partners, raising £8 million, which will fund Sam H, Mind and Inspire to deliver mental health support in 50 local communities, reaching an estimated 10,000 people across Scotland. And if you didn't know how to donate to that, all you had to do was to get your co-op card and every time you bought something, and you signed up to that partnership online, every penny you spent in the co-op then contributed to fund, uh, that charity fundraising. In October, I was invited to attend a recognition event that Sam H hosted at their Sam H Red Hall Walled Garden in South West Edinburgh that thanked co-op colleagues for all of their work that they've done throughout this national charity partnership from fundraising to supporting and promoting their local Sam H co-op funded projects. The local Sam H co-op funded project in Edinburgh is their community link worker service for children and young people who are referred to CAMS but that have not been taken on. The Sam H Red, Red Hall Walled Garden project itself works to improve mental health and well-being through gardening and a variety of outdoor tasks. The team offers a supportive environment for learning skills in IT, horticulture, being more active, spending time in nature and working alongside others for their specialist support. And while I was there, and they let me take Alfie along as well, uh, I met with one of the workers involved, specifically in doing the outreach into schools and how valuable it has been. 
I was pleased to learn that some of the high schools, including Curry and Balerno High School in my area, are involved in this. And it was a real fascinating vis visit, and I learned a lot about this specific Sam H project. Uh, and the orchards and all the, the growing that's going on there was quite something. It was a very beautiful uh, and relaxing environment to be in, which is so key to your mental health as well. There are lots of other super initiatives across Edinburgh as well. And yesterday, in fact, I met with Support in Mind Scotland, who run a super service in Edinburgh ca called the Stafford Centre down on Broughton Street. The Stafford Centre has been supporting people with their mental health in Edinburgh and the surrounding areas for over 30 years. It's a community resource for people experiencing mental ill health with the aim of helping people to manage their mental health, gain greater self-confidence and become more integrated within their community. They offer counselling, welfare rights, a veterans community cafe, carers support project, support to men experiencing traumatic stress disorder and group activities. And what's really, really key there is that's a self-referral service. You do not need to access any GP to access that service and support. The Together Through Tough Times report recognises that these protective factors are those that build resilience. Talking about mental wellbeing, the existence of community hubs such as this where people can access informal support and the development of strong and collaborative community and voluntary sectors where people can build lasting friendships. Volunteering is key to that, and I know that through sport and all sorts of uh, local initiatives that you, you can take part in. This Stafford Centre is a fantastic example of how communities can strengthen an individual's mental well-being and make a community far more resilient to tackling and managing poor mental health. And we know we're not going to hide away from this, that the COVID pandemic has had a very negative impact on our population's mental health, and many of us, perhaps in this chamber too, while this has raised public awareness and increased the conversations that are taking place about mental Ill illness, we all recognise that there's still a lot of work to be done. Um, the services and opportunities that charities like Sam H, Support and Mind, Inspire and Mind Undertake are absolutely vital. And I want to thank all the members for taking time to speak on this subject today. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ms. Weber. I now call Stephanie Callaghan to be followed by Paul O'Kane again for around four minutes, Ms. Callaghan. Presiding officer, I thank Bill Kidd for bringing this important debate to the Chamber tonight and for sponsoring the fantastic event led by Sam H last night. And from me too, a very special shout out to last night's powerful speakers, Linda and Teresa, who brilliantly expressed how Sam H helped them achieve dreams that had previously seemed way, way out of reach for them. And I don't envy my colleague, Kevin Stewart, who had to follow Linda's speech, but he gave it his best anyway. Presiding officer, it's getting darker and colder. The cost of living is biting and the news is full of doom and gloom. And never has it been more vital to openly discuss mental health in this chamber. Times are tough and we face significant challenges, but identifying opportunities to build resilient, vibrant and connected communities in Scotland matters now more than ever before. The Together Through a Tough Times report found that more than two in every 10 Scots describe their current mental health as poor. And for 16 to 24 year olds, this rises to just under one in three. And that's a really scary figure. We also know that the pandemic led to one in four people feeling isolated from their communities and that 36% of people feel they lack the support or the tools to cope with the stress, pressure and difficult circumstances. And with this in mind, perhaps we could all make a point and check in with someone tonight that might be struggling, a colleague, a friend or a family member because taking that time to ask how they are can make a really big difference, as the report says. Presiding officer, at its heart, the Sam H and Co-op report confirms that social connections improve emotional well-being and mental and physical health. Connected communities are resilient communities. And the saying that it takes a village to raise a child is rooted in that understanding. We flourish as human beings in close-knit communities where we feel, feel valued and included. The report notes that helping others can go a long way to improving our mental well-being too. And I think that's something we can all relate to because making someone else smile lifts their own spirits too. Importantly, the report identified four crucial factors that build individual and community resilience. Firstly, we need community hubs and voluntary sector networks. Secondly, 
We need open and supportive community spaces where it's comfortable to talk openly about mental health and wellbeing. Thirdly, we need opportunities to actively participate and connect with other people. And finally, we need a sense of shared identity and belonging. It's absolutely key. And it's also important to be mindful that the research identified some groups that need special attention, including ethnic minorities, those new to the area are living in poverty, and their children and young people too. And I hope we'll have further opportunities to explore this in future debates. Presiding Officer, while Lanarkshire has some of the highest areas of deprivation in Scotland, we've also developed resilient community networks in response to the post-industrial, economic and social deprivation that we've faced. There are too many fantastic local projects to highlight them all tonight, but I will mention a couple. There's the Food for Thought Cafe run by Lanarkshire Association for Mental Health in neighbouring Wisha. It's a community space that provides informal support with mental health, exactly the kind of open environment discussed in the report. And many who access that support also make donations to help the cafe provide free meals for others in need, so they're paying it forward. Another brilliant example is Thornywood Community Council, and they do tons locally, from food parcels, fun days, litter picks, charity events, and they've now got a COVID memorial garden for remembering loved ones and support locals with bereavement care. And that was another focus of the Sam H report. But they go beyond local boundaries too, and last month I went along to their McMillan Coffee Morning event, where they raised over £900 for cancer support. Presiding officer, I could say so much more, but I'm over time, so let me close by applauding the fundraising efforts of the Co-op and Sam H. Raising £8 million is a huge, huge achievement to be proud of, and I look forward to hearing about the future success of the 50 mental wellbeing projects that this money is going to fund going forward. Thank you. Thank you, Ms Callaghan. I now call Paul O'Kane to be followed by Emma Roddick, again in around four minutes. Mr O'Kane. Uh, thank you, Presiding Officer. And I would also like to thank Bill Kidd for bringing this vital issue of mental health to the Chamber for debate this evening, and indeed to Sam H and all the other organisations who support our mental health in Scotland. I'd also like to take the opportunity to put on record my thanks to the work of Sam H Co-op, Mind and Inspire for their hard work in producing this excellent Together Through Tough Times report. I struggle to think of anything more important than the mental health and well-being of everyone who lives here in Scotland. Uh, and I also struggle to think of a more important duty that we carry as legislators in this Parliament than the responsibility to speak up and support the most vulnerable people across our society. I, I think in our current context of the aftermath of the pandemic, coupled with the current pressures that people are facing as a result of the soaring cost of living, the importance of mental health awareness and the fight against stigma has never been more acutely in focus. And I think that's why this is such a timely and important report that we are discussing. And I know that uh, many people felt uh, that sense of importance last night at the reception uh, which was hosted uh, in this parliament. Um, the circumstances that have brought about um, this uh, focus, I think, are continuing to bring challenges, hardship and losses in communities. And we do have a unique opportunity to confront the issues associated with mental health and wellbeing head on in a way that we have never uh, had before. Uh, and I recognised, as I'm sure all colleagues did, so much in the report about communities in my own life and in my own region. Uh, I think of the amazing resilience of communities across West Scotland, some of whom uh, are in the uh, lower quartiles of the Index of Multiple Deprivation. I think of the power of bereavement groups, for example, in local churches, which have run for many years and have done that really important informal work of supporting people when they lose a loved one. I think of the work of the community support and check-in groups that I saw in my own community throughout COVID uh, and the work of people coming together and checking in on one another um, at difficult times. And I was also thinking about the excellent work done by football clubs such as Greenock Morton and St Mirren, not two teams you often hear in a positive line in the same sentence, but for their work, I think, on supporting particularly young men in communities to speak out, have a sense of ownership of the place where they live and the place that they care about, and to talk about how they feel and what's going on in their life. And all of that support is important. And I think that those sorts of examples were highlighted in the report very, very clearly. And it's clear there is an opportunity here to uh, really focus in on some of these more informal structures and, and give them the support that they need. And, and I'm sure the government will want to try and seize the moment with partners and, and indeed do what is needed, because we're told time and again 
uh, that mental health and suicide are priority issues for the government. But I do think we have to reflect that Scotland has uh, high rates of suicide um, and that when we look at children and young people, we know that many vulnerable children and young people are struggling uh, and waiting a long time to access uh, mental health. And indeed, some of the recommendations in the report focus particularly on access to camps. So I think we must ensure that uh, work such as that highlighted in the report is well supported and groups have the funding they need to be able to thrive. And the issue of support for third sector groups is something that I've mentioned in this chamber a number of times. And I think as we continue to go through the cost of living crisis, we need to see a really dedicated uh, effort to support these groups. Uh, in an excellent piece of research published by SAMH last year um, during the pandemic, uh, I'm going to quote from it because I thought it was very important. People reported feeling like a burden and felt anxious about adding to the pressure of the health service by asking for help and support. So it's clear that we do need to move towards a system of reformed referrals and triage services to operate no wrong door approaches. And that might be through your local community group rather than more formal services. And it could mean that referrals to mental health support could come from a range of sources and that pathways towards support and accessible and adaptable um, services would depend on each of us as an individual and what we need. Um, we do want to see more resilient communities. In drawing to a close, presiding officer, I believe that focusing on what is outlined in this report and reforming how we go about delivering services, we can ensure that no one is rejected from support and every referral is signposted to the right service so that everyone has the right care in the right place at the right time. Thank you. Thank you, Sir O'Kane. I now call Emma Roddick. Uh, again, around four minutes, Ms Roddick. Thank you, Presiding Officer. I was very pleased to be able to attend Bill Kidd's reception last night. The contributions from people with lived experience in particular were very striking, and I was glad to hear from the Minister, Kevin Stewart, uh, about how important it is to him that policy on mental health comes from exactly that lived experience. Not just important, he said, vital. And as someone with that lived experience, I'm very reassured to have a minister responsible for mental health who understands the value in asking people who know best where the work needs done. I thank Bill Kidd for giving me the opportunity last night to speak with Sam H, see me and others who attended and for bringing the debate here this evening. I was very interested to read the report. Eight million is an astonishing amount to have raised for mental health through co-ops and I congratulate them on their campaign. I was also delighted to hear from Sam H's Joe Anderson last night that the co-op which raised the largest amount was in my region, Stornoway, where the store raised 40,000 despite the town only having a population of 4,800. So a massive well done to everyone in Stornoway who supported those incredible efforts. COVID was very difficult for so many of us. And I often say that the pandemic, particularly living through the lockdowns, was a trauma in itself. It also brought other traumas, such as bereavements. I lost my mother to the virus. If there's any positive to have come from all that, it has to be the community reaction to the crisis. Across the country, groups formed and carried out just incredible work, helping people, recognising that neighbours might need help getting messages, reaching out and showing support with signs in windows or singing and clapping out of them. I've no doubt that there are currently adverse mental health effects caused by the pandemic and that there are long-term ones we don't fully understand yet. The work that Sam H is doing in improving and solidifying community resilience was needed pre-pandemic, no doubt, but it's very well time now. People want to come together and they're more aware than ever that the world is a very strange place and you just don't know what national or international events might happen and change your everyday life. That's a hard thing to accept particularly for many who are neurodivergent. It can take a long time to get back to normal or form a new normal. And I hear from people, particularly young and disabled people in the Highlands and Islands, about the acute anxiety that they're suffering now and how this is stopping them from doing the things that they like. Something which Centred, a mental health charity in Inverness, has looked into in their latest report. These people need care and support, often from health professionals, but more so from their community. Anyone else who's gone through masses of CBT and mindfulness therapies will have had Maslow's hierarchy of needs drilled into their brain as well. We need safety and belonging before we can develop self-esteem and self-actualization. I had the pleasure of visiting Cromarty Firth Men's Shed earlier this year, a little community all on its own in the woods. And within minutes, I'd been offered a standing invitation to future parties and a bacon roll. These community-led, community-run projects mean so much to so many. We all have mental health and resilient communities go a long way in supporting and creating good mental health. 
I have been thinking since my own debate on mental health stigma last week about the community that is this place and how we also have a responsibility to each other to support mental wellbeing and resilience in politics. If you need an example, I would look to, to Bill Kidd, who always seems to be quietly carrying out little acts of kindness. This job can be all-consuming, and while we can disagree, sometimes fundamentally and completely, we should lead by example and perhaps be a bit inspired by Sam H, C, me and others and look out for colleagues as we would for our constituents. Thank you. Well said, Ms Roddick. I now invite the Minister to respond to the debate for around about seven minutes. Mr. Uh, thank you very much, President Officer, and I'm grateful to all members for their participation in this uh, important debate today. Um, I'd like to thank Bill Kidd uh, for focusing attention on the important insights from the Together Through Tough Times report. Um, and Bill, uh, in his speech, talked about helping others. And I think, as Emma Roddick has just highlighted, Bill is very well known for uh, a cheery smile uh, and also uh, for uh, many of us dropping off chocolate and biscuits at various points as an act of kindness. But beyond that, uh, his acts of kindness are very much recognised in the communities that he represents. And I, I was at Men Matter Scotland, which Mr Kidd mentioned in his speech uh, a couple of weeks ago, and in pride of place in one of the rooms there um, is a, a framed uh, letter from Bill. So I think that communities there uh, recognise uh, that Bill uh, spends a huge amount of his time helping others. Bill Kidd, sorry, Mr. President Kidd. Officer. Um, I'd also uh, like to uh, say that I was pleased to attend the parliamentary reception last night, hosted by Bill Kidd, uh, uh, on behalf of Sam H, following the publication of this report. Uh, and we have already heard about the moving testimony uh, that we've hear heard last night from those with lived experience, reinforcing the importance of placing people and communities at the heart of everything that we do. Um, and I think. Uh, Stephanie Callaghan was absolutely right to point out that uh, Linda's speech last night uh, was uh, better than mine uh, because she spoke from the heart about her experience and there is nothing like that. Uh, and the best bit of all was when she told us all that she went off script. That was straight from the heart. Um, and we heard from Teresa who couldn't be with us but was on video last night. And uh, Bill Kidd again spoke uh, around about uh, her situation. But the thing that caught me most last night, uh, a lump in my throat, uh, was when on that video, um, Teresa said, I've conquered the world. Because these differences meant that much to her. It uh, was that important. President officer, we continue to live through unprecedented times and we cannot underestimate the cumulative effects that COVID-19, the conflict in Ukraine and the current cost of living have on our mental well-being. And the role of communities in supporting people's well-being is more important than ever. I welcome uh, the contribution this report makes to our, understa our, our understanding around this. The findings underline how communities can strengthen mental well-being by creating spaces to talk and access support. The reception last night also celebrated the excellent work which has grown out of the partnership between the co-op, Sam H, Mind and Inspire. It shows us how partnerships such as these can develop community resilience. It also reflects our own commitment to build capacity within community organisations to support mental health and wellbeing, particularly in those groups most at risk. In 2021, the government launched our community's mental health and wellbeing fund for adults to improve community mental wellbeing and tackle loneliness and isolation. We provided £21 million during the first year of the fund and we're keen to ensure that people with a lived experience and communities themselves shaped how funding was spent. And we achieved that through a network of 32 local partnerships groups led by the third sector interfaces. To date, these partnerships have distributed funding to approximately 1,800 community projects across Scotland. This has benefited a diverse range of initiatives, including those focused on sport and exercise, nature, social spaces, art and therapeutic approaches. And a key theme is connecting people 
uh, and providing community spaces to come together with others. And it also has a particular focus on socio-economic deprivation. I've been fortunate to visit a number of these projects. I met with users of the West Lothian 50 Plus Network, which do great work to tackle social isolation among older people. I also met with users of Wellbeing Works in Dundee and heard about their many activities and their fantastic community toolkit programme that provides a free library of equipment that people can borrow and use. Uh, and this year, we have invested a further £15 million to continue this important community work, strengthening the emphasis on supporting people through the cost crisis and addressing mental health inequalities. Already, we are supporting Broke Not Broken in Perth and Kinross, uh, which helps people facing socio-economic disadvantage uh, and those experiencing isolation, stress and anxiety through cooking classes and uh, baby and women's groups, to name just a few. And our focus goes beyond adults because we have uh, the uh, Community Mental Health and Wellbeing Support and Services Framework, which provides £50 million to local authorities to fund community uh, mental health-based uh, services for children, young people and their families. And that funding is flexible for council, uh, councils and they implement uh, supports that uh, meet their local priorities, uh, enabling them to make services available to children and young people for whom uh, CAMS is not suitable or for those who are awaiting treatment. There are 230 of these new enhanced community-based supports uh, right across our country. Uh, operating in every single council area. And they have helped over 38,000 children, uh, young people and their parents and carers uh, since the first half of 2022. And that's more than double the number who access the support in the second half of 2021. Uh, President Officer, I could go on for hours talking about the good work that is going on across Scotland, but I know that you won't allow that. But let me just finish on this. Today's debate has highlighted the pivotal role that communities play in supporting good mental health uh, and well-being. And I'm very grateful for all of the contributions from members today. Um, I'm grateful for all of the thoughtful, thoughtful contributions. Grateful to the co-op, to Sam H, Mind and Inspire for this insightful report. And we will continue to build the essential partnerships needed to protect our mental health and nurture thriving communities for all. Thank you, President Officer. Thank you very much indeed, Minister. That concludes the debate and I close this meeting of Parliament.